Welcome to Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples, a channel of conversation and board games. Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples. Today on the channel, we are going to be looking at a roll and write game that was birthed out of the pandemic in 2020. Today, we're looking at Rolling Realms, a roll and write game from Jamie Stegmeier of Stolmeyer Games that involves a whole bunch of mini games featuring games from Stonemeyer Games. I'll show you how this plays in the radar overview final forecast coming up. First, cue the thunder. So the radar overview for Rolling Realms, a roll and write game from Jamie Stagmeyer, plays one to six players in about 30 minutes a time. Each player will get a stack of cards in their color. They'll also get a dry erase marker and a dry erase eraser. And there are a bunch of different colors. You got black and purple and brown and yellow and blue. So a lot of different cards. And these cards will have different games that you'll be uh, playing, mini games. Each player will also get a round card to write the different uh, numbers um, of the dice roll each round and your score as well as a resource card and so I just want to show you which uh, which game so you have wingspan and then the society uh, between two castles you also get pendulum scythe euphoria tapestry charterstone viticulture my little scythe between two cities um, I, I personally have honey buzz um, I bought this one to go along with the game because I really do enjoy Honey Buzz. And each of these games, each of these cards kind of act in different ways. Um, they all play differently. But the game is played over three rounds and in each round you'll take all of your realms, you'll mix them all up, you'll take three and then you'll put them out and then everybody will collect those three cards from their own realm uh, stack and then that will be that round. Each round is nine different, I guess, turns per se. And on a turn, everybody will be um, writing numbers on here. Someone will take the die, the dice, and they will write two and a five. They'll roll, everybody will write a two and a five. At that point, you're gonna be using those numbers on different realms. You can use each number once per realm. And whenever you put a different uh, numbers on these cards, you'll be gaining resources and you will be then spending those resources. If you spend two pumpkins, you can adjust a die. So if I had, let's say two pumpkins, I could make this four or this five into a six. Sorry, I can make this five into a four or this five into a six. Um, I could then also, you know, spend three pumpkins to adjust a die and use it on a realm that I've already used this turn because you can only use each realm once Per turn. If you use hearts, you can use those to, you know, gain virtual dice. If you get coins, you can use those to create virtual dice as well. But let me just show you a little bit how this plays. So I would get a two and a five. And so for this one, I'm going to put a five. So before between two castles, anytime you, you know, fill one of these columns, you gain the resources on top. So at this point, I put a five there, I will gain a pumpkin. And then I have a two. Maybe I'll put that in uh, the wingspan, which would also give me a pumpkin. So each of these score and act differently. I'm not going to go in depth on all of them, but they all, you know, gain you resources to a degree and they all produce stars. And that's how you're ultimately going to win the game by gaining stars. So for the between the two castles, you fill in squares from the bottom to the top with each number um, moving up is lower than the number underneath it. So you're pretty much like building from the bottom up, lower numbers to higher numbers. Society is kind of opposite. You gotta have to go down. So higher numbers, each one underneath has to be lower. Wingspan, um, you just put any three numbers from left to right in each of these boxes. And if at the end of the game, you have, let's say a one and a four, let's say for that example, these three numbers, if they equal this, will gain you a bonus star. So this is two plus one is three plus four is seven. So that will gain me a star as well as I would gain a star for putting a four. So these ones will work as you see 
um, that's how you'll be using the numbers and manipulating them um, with the help of the pumpkins to add more and more numbers and so that's kind of like the whole aspect of this game so you go through each of the nine rounds um, each of the nine turns per round at the end of every round you count up how many stars you have so for instance if i had two here and one here i'd have one two three four five stars and then every resource is 0.1 of a star so 5.3 so that my score would be 5.3 i would then erase all of my resources erase all of this which as you can see it works pretty good that would be the end of round one. We would then take all of our cards yet again, shuffle them up, and then build another three different realms. In this case, it would be Pendulum, Tapestry, and Euphoria. And these all play differently. Um, you know, this, you'll be filling in this grid with, uh, with different shapes. This one, you'll be marking off numbers. And if the sum of one of these big rectangles, depending on what the sum is, you'll gain either coins, stars, or resources. Pendulum, you, you can, you know, Fill in an octagon or, uh, you know, put an oct uh, a shape around an octagon. Outline the octagon. There we go. Outline the octagon with any number. And then on a future turn, say it's a six, I can cross off the six. And then I get everything that's already been circled. So it's kind of like uh, a time capsule in a, in a way that you want to fill up a lot of these and then start triggering them and, and, and crossing off the the hourglasses so that or yeah the timer so then you can gain all these resources so uh, that's how those ones work um you know what like i said there's a whole bunch of different ones uh, honey buzz i really like because it's the game uh very similar to honey buzz uh you don't gain the resources right away you only get the gain the resources or whatever is in that um you know that block let's say this one this is gonna make sense if you play honey buzz if you ever cross off the one the two the three that would be as if this hive is enclosed and then you gain the resources a star as well as a coin but this does not come with the game this i it's an aftermarket there's tons and tons of realms that you can buy and add to this game to have more replayability and more variety there's also a solo mode i will say this i haven't really played the solo mode so i can't speak of that much but it's kind of like in the sense of a golf score and it has you know a little mini golf course and then each of the mini games uh each of the holes you use you know specific realms different rule changes and so on and so forth so there you go that in a nutshell is how you play rolling realms let's now move on move on over and check out the final forecast So the final forecast for Rolling Realms, a roll and write game from Jamie Stegmeier, birthed out of the desire to play games over Facebook Live during the pandemic. This is a good production game. I will say this, I love the dice, they're big dice. I like that, I like, I like these cards that you can write on and so you know when you're done the game you don't have to like discard paper or anything like that, you just use your little... Uh, Eraser, wipe the cards clean, put them in the box, and you're good to go for next time. You can play this over Zoom or any, you know, video conference technology that you want. Hopefully, we never get to that point in history again that we have to go back to playing via Zoom. But this game, Roll and Write, I played a fair amount of different Roll and Write games, Railroad Inc., Trails, for, uh, Trails of Takana, which I absolutely love. Um, currently doing the My City Roll and Build, Next Station London. So I've played some Roll and Builds, Ripple Rush, um, some lighter Roll and Write games or Flip and Write, you might say. Um, I found this one to be a little bit harder to teach and a little bit thinkier or a little bit more to wrap my mind around playing these games. I will say this. I haven't played many Stonemeyer games. I've played Scythe once. I have Wingspan. Um, but besides that, I haven't played many games from Stonemeyer games. But the ones that I have played that are represented in this Rolling Realms, 
made sense to me more than the other ones. And I think that's really cool. I did uh, say that I have the Honey Buzz um, one as well, and I absolutely love Honey Buzz. So this one made sense to me. I think if you know Stonemeyer Games and you enjoy Stonemeyer Games games, the role, the Rolling Realms, and this whole system will make a lot more sense to you, and you may enjoy it a little bit more. I tried teaching this to uh, my wife, who plays a lot of games with me, and to some of my guys in my game group who play games like Whistle Mountain and Honey Buzz and some Everdale and some bigger games, and they had a little bit of a hard time wrapping their mind around some of these invisible dice, and you know, pumpkins can be used for this, and hearts can be used for this, and dice, and so it, it's a little bit more involved than I thought it was going into this game. That's not necessarily a shot at the game, but I think that this is almost kind of like um, like, like an inside thing for people, an inside roll and write game for hobby enthusiasts. Because if you love Stonemaier games, you know and you understand the games, and then when they translate them into these cards, it kind of makes sense on how you're like, playing these mini games like pendulum for example the game's all about time and i haven't played it but i know the concept of pendulum and so you know when you're filling the different things you're kind of how do i say this you're you're writing these things down to gain resources and then you're using those numbers later on in the game so like there's depending on how much you fill your card up before you start filling in the hourglasses will reflect on how many resources you get so it's kind of like a time-based thing things like that honey buzz again it's not a stonemeyer games game but it makes sense the way that honey buzz works and how this card works that you only get the resources once the whole hive or the whole like hex is filled in that's how honey buzz works so i like the nods to the games uh, as to how they're distilled down to like the essence of one part of the game into a card. I really, really like that. I love that there's so many different realms. Um, you know, there's the Libertalia realm and, you know, Arc Nova and we uh, Architects of the West Kingdom. And there's so many realms and so many realms that are planned, I'm sure, that you can have so much replayability in this game because each game you're only going to use nine out of the 11 realms and depending on which ones will come out some give you resources a lot easier other ones don't some of them are a little more puzzly than other ones so i like that and how they're they just all have a little unique aspect to them and depending on which three you're using which round or each round it's going to feel a little bit different so i like that i think like i said this is kind of like like an insider thing for hobby enthusiasts. And so I can uh, see lots and lots of more realms coming out. I know there's like tons of variants on BGG that people are coming up with of their favorite games all the time. And so this I think is going to appeal to those that really like Stonemaier games. It's not, if you don't like Stonemaier games or you haven't played any of the games in their, in their catalog, you can still enjoy this, but I think it'll be enjoyed more in my light. It's always, okay, well, anyways. Uh, I feel that it'll be enjoyed more by people who know the games and it'll be easier to teach if you know the games. So overall, I'm gonna give it a 70% chance meeples because I like each game, there's different mini games and how I'm gonna work the different mini games and how they're gonna affect each other one. So I'm giving a 70% chance meeples because I did enjoy it. A little harder to teach than I was anticipating, but overall, good production, and I love the replayability and just the ins and outs of it. So 70% Chance Meeples for Rolling Realms. My name is Brent. Check us out on Facebook. I'm cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Till next time, grab your umbrella. The forecast is cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and remember to grab your umbrella because the forecast is cloudy with the Chance of Meeples.